Hi everyone, this is Mingyao from Singularity Engineering and today I'm going to be looking at the generalized K-Omega model or the Gecko model. This is a new turbulence model from ANSYS and it seems like it's much better than any of the existing turbulence models, two equation turbulence models out there. So I'm going to play around with it a little bit, hopefully to show you the benefits of, the, of this model and um, uh, why most people should, be, should start using this tool. So let's open up ANSYS Fluent. Currently, the Gecko model is only avail available in ANSYS Fluent. It was released earlier this year in early 2019. So here's my simulation. We're going to do a basic flow over a hump. And in this case, we're going to look at the separation. So the key benefit of the Gecko model is that we can turn it on. It's, it's a K-omega type of model. It can do everything that all the other, uh, that every other a K two equation model can do. So it can pretend to be a K epsilon model or a two equation K omega model or an SSD model, but it has these very useful parameters that allow us to tune the, the coefficients. Now in models like this, where I have a blunt body, we have a flow going over a blunt body, the biggest thing that's going to impact the drag on a geometry like this is going to be the separation. So luckily for us, this uh, Gecko model has a separation coefficient. So right now, the, let's see, my, my first simulation had a separation coefficient of 1.75. In this case, I'm going to change the separation coefficient to 1. What's different about the, K, the generalized K-omega model or the Gecko model is that this coefficient doesn't impact any of the other behaviors. So this only tunes the separation behavior of the model. Similarly, we have a near, mo near wall model, a mixing model, a and a jet model. So let's take a look at what happens when we change the coefficient from, uh, from 1.75 to 1. All right, so we're going to set up the boundaries. I have an inlet on this side. We'll set this to a meter per second. Outlet, we'll set it to default, uh, 0 gauge Pascal. So let's go ahead and solve this. Initialize and solve for a couple hundred iterations. Okay, so the simulation is completed and we can compare the two results here. Let's uh, find my results and we'll link up the simulation results comparing Gecko at 1.75 and Gecko at 1. Okay, so here are the results. We'll link the two images together. I'm going to plot the XY plane and let's take a look at velocity distribution. Okay. We can see that when the, when the separation coefficient is set to 1.75, the detached layer, the detached region, or the separation occurs earlier, and the reattachment occurs much later. When I set the separation coefficient to one, the reattachment happens earlier, and it, it, the flow remains attached longer. We can even look at the differences between these two to sh to show that indeed the biggest thing, what's happening, the difference between the two models is in the, de in the separation area and the reattachment area. So this is where we have a lot of difference. In one case, we attach much earlier than the other. So there's a quite a significant difference here. Um, separation is perhaps the biggest contributor to any t type of uh, drag, drag modeling. So if you're trying to predict the drag of a car or an aircraft or any other vehicle, you can now use the separation coefficient to tune your model so that you can match test data. From there on, in future designs, you can use that co coefficient and obviously get much more accurate results um, as compared to test data. So this is a great, great capability. Previously, it was very difficult to tune either the K-Omega, SST, or K-Epsilon models because if you change the parameter, it can affect a wide range of scenarios. Let's take a look at another model here. So this is a jet, a jet simulation. So we want to model what happens 
in uh, a 2D model of a jet. So traditionally, uh, jet simulations are more accurately done using the K-Epsilon model, whereas uh, boundary layer separation is better model using the K-Omega model. But in this case, we have the Gecko model. So we can decide to, to modify the model to behave accordingly. So right now, if we set it to the Gecko model, we have this option for coefficient for jet. And we're going to change this from the default of 0.9 to, let's say, 1.75. And again, we can set up this very quickly. Uh, the inlet boundary condition will be one meter again. And uh, let's initialize and run this for a couple hundred iterations. You should almost notice the conversion behavior in Fluent right now behaves very nicely. Um, this is by default using uh, the most modern method, so we're using couple scheme with pseudo, pseudo transient, so it converges very quickly and solves extremely fast. Let's do the same thing as before, so we're going to grab a result tab and link up the solution and we can compare the two. Okay, so this is our jet uh, model. Sometimes this will be useful for things like jet mixing or spraying, and you want to capture the, the behavior of the jet accurately. Uh, let's lock them together. So um, <clears throat> when the jet is 0.9, you can see there's a little bit more spreading. As we increase the jet coefficient, the jet stays tightly focused for longer duration. Uh, we can again compare the two results and you can see that in this case the biggest difference is in the jet spreading area. The near wall area doesn't get affected at all. The main difference is how the jet is spreading between the two different models. So very useful for spraying simulations. I've dealt with uh, some folks who works on um, biomedical devices where they want to, or mass spectrometers where they have jets of very high velocity gas. And this allows you to tune the results to uh, simulation results to match your experimental results. And once you, it's matched up, you can in the future use your proprietary coefficients to get very accurate simulations. The last model I want to look at, let's uh, close all the, the ones that I don't need anymore. This one too. The last one is a 3D simulation. So we're going to do the same analysis, same process as we've done earlier. <clears throat> 3D, so I'm going to use uh, five cores to run this simulation. And this is a model of just a box. So this, this shows you one of the new capabilities that's been implemented in, in Gecko. Let's turn that on. So it's a K-Omega, generalized K-Omega model. And the feature here is corner flow correction. So in, and again, we have a constant here. Uh, as flow goes in, in the corners of uh, flow region, uh, two equation model typically doesn't capture secondary flow characteristics. Those could be important in certain areas. Again, it could be related to flow separation, which means drag prediction and all, all that accuracy-related um, benefits. So we're going to turn the corner cor correction uh, co prediction on and run a quick simulation to compare the two. All right, for this model, I actually used the initial velocity of 2 meters per second here. So let's go ahead and run the simulation. Initialize, and let's run for a couple hundred iterations. Mm. 
Okay, it's completed. And let's take a look at the difference between the two results with and without the corner correction. Okay, so let's uh, lock it in here. We'll create a plane, and this will be an XZ plane, and we'll kind of have it somewhere down downstream. And what I want to look at is, uh, let's take a look at the streamlines on the surface. All right, you can see this is the without the corner correction, and this is with the corner correction. And clearly, we now can uh, simulate the, um, secondary flows. Uh, this is quite nice because it's, the corner correction is also a coefficient. So if you need it, you can tune the secondary flow characteristics to be a little bit more uh, larger or smaller so that you can get an accurate simulation result. So all in all, this is a, definitely a huge improvement in turbulence modeling. Now we have a second, a two equation model, which is the workhorse allows us to run steady state simulation. Um, at the same time, it allows us to carefully tune the separation, near wall behavior, mixing and jet behavior, as well as uh, implement corner correction and curvature cor correction. So if you're doing drag modeling, or other type of simulation, and you're currently trying to decide whether you should use k-epsilon, SST, or maybe you think you need to move to a scale-resolving model like a LES or DES model, it's definitely worthwhile to give the Gecko model a try to see if you can match your, um, your, uh, your test results. And this means you can you know, save a huge amount of time in terms of uh, simulation time, and you can um, get a more, much more accurate result by adjusting these coefficients. So looking forward to hearing feedback on what people think of the Gecko model. If you like this video, please uh, like it on YouTube and leave a comment. If you want to discuss this more in more detail, feel free to reach out to us at singularityeng.com. Thanks and have a good day. Mm -hmm.